Before spending your money on collector tanks in World of Tanks Blitz, you should probably know which ones are good and which ones are a waste of money. So here are my personal top 5 tier 10 collector tanks in World of Tanks Blitz. Here are the criteria I pick them by. So let's see what are the best and don't forget to like and subscribe and put your top 5 tier 10 collectors down in the comment section. There are only three premium tank destroyers at tier 10. And yes, premium collectors basically the same. Now, here's the thing. There's the Badger, there's the Object 268 version 4, and there is the XM66F. The XM, I'm going to ignore that because they haven't actually sold it properly. And the 268 version 4, well, it kind of pretends to be a heavy tank when it's in fact not. And it can be penned very easily through the sides if it turns just slightly. Now, the Badger... It's very slow, but it has an excellent gun and essentially an impenetrable upper plate. So if there is one choice for tank destroyer, then the badger is going to be it. But because it's a tank destroyer, let's move on. The VK90 is a specialist in side scraping, making essentially the mouse and the VK72 kind of obsolete. Because unlike the VK72, this vehicle can side scrape properly, and unlike the mouse, it can't really pen the turret cheeks that easily. Now, obviously, the lower plate is quite massive. However, it has 10 degrees of gun depression over the side of the vehicle, and it even has good accuracy for a gun like this. So the VK90 is the city specialist, if there is ever one. It's got great armor, has good enough mobility for a super heavy, and it has a gun that can rival the other heavy tank guns with low DPM, but decent alpha damage. But if there is mouse enjoyers among you, and I know there are, then this is the perfect choice to replace your mouse with, because this thing can side scrape all day long, and nobody can ever stop you from it. However, the turret is at the rear, which makes it somewhat complicated to play around corners, so it is a very specific vehicle, which is obviously why it can never place higher on a list like this, because it is not very well rounded, it's good at that one thing, and that one thing only. But that is what it truly masters. This is the side scraping god of tier 10. Speed is the T95E6's motto because this thing moves like a medium, has the armor of a medium, but essentially has a heavy tank gun plonked straight onto it. Now, don't expect this thing to bounce anything because the armor of this thing essentially doesn't exist. And if that's not all, then it even has a cupola on top of the turret as well, making it worse. So that's not great, but it can move really well. So if you are a good player, this is the excellent choice. And Wargaming doesn't respect this vehicle much, which is also why they've sold it for very cheap multiple, multiple times, which is another reason why it's on here. It's incredibly cheap. It has quite a high skill cap, but if you can get all of it out of this vehicle, you got yourself the heavy tank equivalent of a Leopard 1. Incredible high potential and also incredibly high entry level. So this thing only for advanced players, but if you are, then you can absolutely own the battlefield with this tank. Why is the KPZ-50T here instead of the buffed AMX-30B? Well, because the AMX-30B is French. Cheese. Now, this vehicle is a perfect combination of every factor that you want in a good medium tank. You've got great mobility, you have amazing armor, especially also on the turret. You don't have any annoying cupolas to deal with. And the big downside, though, is the alpha damage. It has one of the lowest alpha damages of all of tier 10. However, it makes up for that with excellent DPM. Now, here's the thing. This vehicle is a great thing, but the AMX 30B often gets sold for cheaper. That's the only downside to the KBZ-50T. Now, Wargaming kind of doesn't like selling this vehicle, which I kind of don't understand, but at the same time, I do understand because it is a great tank, and if it would flood the matchmaker, eh, maybe it wouldn't be so amazing. But this is a well-rounded vehicle that can essentially play any role, especially for a medium tank. It's also easy to play, so you shouldn't get this after 500 battles, but maybe after 5,000. The honorable mention does go to the Super Conqueror because this thing is large and very nice. 
And if you can get it, it is also still worth it because in a face-hugging position like that, it is essentially unbeatable and also playing hull down, this thing is a treat. Now the things that kind of put this thing down are its sort of not very good mobility and its questionable accuracy. However, if you do own a Super Conqueror and you have access to this particular camouflage, I highly encourage you to put this camel on your Super Conqueror. Why? Because reasons. I really didn't know what to put at number one because there are quite a couple that can contest for this spot. But in the end, I decided to go with the Concept 1B because this thing has 3000 DPM. It only has 380 alpha damage, which is unusual for a 120 millimeter gun, but it has excellent accuracy. It has 10 degrees of gun depression and a turret that can be essentially described as a uh, pinhead, I guess, but it is impenetrable from the front. Obviously, if you turn to the side, because of how streamlined and straight it is, can be penned very easily through the side of the vehicle. So always make sure to only engage one enemy at a time with this vehicle and point your turret straight at them. The upper plate on this vehicle is also extremely strong. The lower plate is a weak spot like it is on every single vehicle in the game, except maybe the Object 268 version 4, but you can just pen that through the sides of the gun anyway. So this vehicle is a very good tank all round. It's also sort of easy to play because you can go hull down essentially anywhere, which is another great factor. And Wargaming doesn't tend to put this thing in crates all the time either. So there you go. It's very good. I can recommend it. Unless they sell it for like 50k, in which case, nah. Did you really think the Chieftain Mark VI isn't going to pop up on this list? Now, why is it number zero? Well, very simple, because this vehicle is the high exalted perfection of World of Tanks Blitz, and it shall not be mentioned in line with those other peasant vehicles, as this is the one true royal tank in this game. And if there is one tank that you should pray to, and I don't care whoever you pray to, as long as you pray to the Chieftain Mark VI, because this vehicle is the epitome of perfection. So what do you think of my list? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Put it down in the comments. And if anyone puts the MX-30B at number one, now we're going to have a talk. But as always, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you for the next one, because there's going to be quite a couple more top fives to go on this channel.